I'm joined by three uh, young political activists now who've joined the Conservative Party with a mission to make sure the vote turns out the way they hope it will or they want it to. They're part of a group called Strong Canada. They're Aaron Binder, Casey Dunn, and Nicholas Tsurgis. Good to see you all. Thanks for coming in to speak with me. Uh, who wants to start here? Tell me why you created a Strong Canada. Nick, why don't you take that one? Okay, well, um, we're in a situation right now, Peter, uh, where less than half a percent of the Canadian population is going to pick the person who could very well be our next Prime Minister. And this is in a scenario where the Conservative Party's membership numbers are almost double what we expect them to be. So engagement in this party's election, this uh, selection of a leader, less than half a percent of the population. That's not, that's not democratic to me. My, my political science brain says this is not a well-functioning democracy. Something needs to change. People need to be more engaged. Okay, but if I understand correctly, you didn't start out as conservatives. You created a website. Uh, you created a YouTube channel. You mm -hmm. created a Twitter feed. Then you got Conservative Party memberships. Uh, maybe I don't have the order right, but Aaron, were you, were you weren't a conservative before, but you, you're a Conservative Party member today so that you could be part of this process. But are you a conservative? Or does that matter? That's a tough question to answer because, in my opinion, and these two will agree with me, and a lot of conservatives will actually agree, a lot of people from across the board will agree that party lines are starting to blur. So you're in a situation now where those ideals held by party members in the past aren't necessarily the same individualistic ideals that people are holding today. So instead of collectively voting, people our age are starting to vote more based on the ideas that are being presented, which is why Justin Trudeau did so well in 2015. He was a populist candidate. He put out a lot of ideas. Uh, we now know he overpromised and underdelivered, but it's about making that connection with the voter that's going to be successful moving forward. So in reference to what we did, right. uh, we've had a lot of success with that. So, Casey, tell me more about what role you've played in the leadership race. Uh, you, you got involved, you got, you got into it to, with, a, with a view to uh, achieving a certain uh, outcome. Uh, so what have you been doing? Well, I think that outcome changed a little bit over time, but essentially what became our overall goal was to get young people engaged, not just in the traditional, maybe partisan way, but to look at the actual issues, who the leaders are and what they're saying. And I think the way we were most successful in that was we interviewed most of the candidates. We asked them a broad range of questions that are important to millennials, the things that young people want to hear talked about, which often they don't get, like they don't get to hear those answers. Right. So we, we did those interviews. We put that material out in the places that young people are looking to gather information. And I think uh, we really provided a different angle that you might not find in the traditional media to find that information. So what are you trying to do? So do you want a candidate to win or do you want a set of ideas and values to win? Which, which is it? Well, that's, uh, it's a complex answer because people our age are very complex individuals. When we started this campaign, we wanted to see Kelly Leach and Kevin O'Leary lose, point blank. That was it. And why? Uh, why? We found Kelly Leach to be reprehensible. I spent a lot of time in the States and I've seen their social fabric being torn apart over the past couple of years because of that great divide between people uh, across the political spectrum there. And that's something I don't want to see happen in Canada either. Someone like Kelly Leach, her policies, her messaging specifically, I find incredibly divisive. Somebody like Kevin O'Leary, I wouldn't let him run my government much in the same way that I wouldn't want a politician running my business. So uh, from my perspective, he did this as a publicity stunt so he could negotiate a higher salary contract on Shark Tank. Okay, we're going to hear from him coming up in our program. Uh, okay, Nick, do you, you want to jump in on that? What, so, yeah. what do you after? So, who do you want to win the race? Well, I, I, I want the person who balances several qualities, and those qualities, some of them have a lot to do with me and my own personal values as a Canadian, a concerned Canadian, as a voter. But some of them have to do with the party itself. Uh, so I, I want the person who best balances my own values and views and is also a good fit for this party. Because at the end of the day, what I want out, out of this leadership election is a strong conservative party uh, that can compete in 2019 and can hold the existing government to account because that's a healthy democracy. So I'm a nerd. I'm a policy nerd. I you know, love political science theory, democratic theory. So a lot of my personal motivations for this are about strengthening democracy in this country. Okay, Casey, so, uh, Casey, let me ask you. So the truth is, we're back to this. So people just heard Aaron, and they're going to, you know, conservatives watching will say, okay, 
they're infiltrators to the party. They're not serious about this process. They're trying to disrupt our process. What's your answer to that? Well, I think what Nick said earlier about democracy is an important factor to take in. Uh, that's part of why I joined this team, because I think that all Canadians have the right to have a say in who the next leader will be. But in terms of whether or not we're true conservatives or even what that means, I came into this thinking I was the least conservative person. And I met all of these different candidates and I was really won over by their ideas, by their personalities as leaders. And that's not to say I liked all of them or all of their ideas, but I think that this is an opportunity for them to win over people who maybe wouldn't traditionally vote for conservatives. Now we have memberships, now we're listening to you. So let us hear what you have to say and maybe we will be traditional conservatives next election if, if you can win us. Yeah. Have you voted? I've voted. Have yes. you all voted? Or tomorrow. tomorrow. Sorry. You, so you tomorrow. wanted to wait till last. You last wanted to do it in person. Second. That's <laughs> right. Uh, why? Oh, I, well, we actually encouraged our members, um, you know, many of whom are around the country, to wait uh, until the last possible day when ballots could be mailed right. and assured that they would arrive on time. Uh, and we did this because things can change. So you know, the final debate happened uh, 26th of April. And right away, there was this big push from all the campaigns. OK, that was the last debate. It's time to vote. And we said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Um, you know, wait just a minute. Uh, wh what's the rush? There's still another month. So much can change. And as soon as you cast your vote, that's it. Now the party and the candidates who are courting your vote right. no longer have to remain accountable mm -hmm. to you. They no longer have to keep the promises or, or say the things that they've been saying all along in order to assure uh, that they will get your vote and they will get your support. So why give up your power? A vote is power and it's temporary power. Okay, so it's, it, this time it's conservatives. Uh, are you encouraging people to, so same, I, I don't, you know, I'm not sure how the membership process works in every party and who's allowed? Are you gonna take out NDP memberships and Actually, vote in that race as well? That is that is the plan. Okay. So Absolutely. we wouldn't, and we wouldn't be a partisan if we didn't, if we only did this in one party. If we did this strategy of let's encourage, you know, people in the center, even some people on the left to join the conservative party in order to block um, radical or substandard candidates, um, and we didn't enact the same strategy on the other side, that would be sort of hypocritical to, for us to do. We wouldn't be um, living out, acting out the mission of a partisan engagement. To be a partisan, we need to engage in all of the parties. I think it's really about raising the bar of political discussion. I, I've gone to the uh, Instagram account or the website of the Conservative Party of Canada, and they will actually put out, I, I would be so insulted if I was a leadership candidate. They put out an ad that said, any one of these people would be better than Trudeau. I was like, that's how you're going to represent the strongest and brightest of your party? Well, at least they'd be better than Trudeau. Like, I, I want to see all the parties raise this political conversation so that we're actually talking about the issues that matter and reaching out to Canadians, listening to Canadians, and not just playing this really pathetic game on the internet. All right. Uh, listen, thank you all for stopping by. It's been good to talk to you. Well, thanks, Peter, for all having right, us. And we'll see what happens when, <laughs> yeah. see if you get the choices you, uh, you hoped you would get uh, when you decided to start this this process and uh, we'll know that in about 24 hours from now. Very thank, soon. thank you all.